House is resumed for the extended sitting. For anyone watching, time does stand still, and today we are still Tuesday. Call on Government Order of the Day number five. State Sector and Crown Entities Reform Bill, second reading. I call the Honourable Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that the State Sector and Crown Entities Reform Bill be now read a second time. I'd like to acknowledge the members of the Governance Administration Committee for their work on the bill, the very constructive uh, recommendations they have made for amendment, which I'll speak about um, in a few moments, and for the collegial way that they have approached the debates uh, on this particular uh, matter. Uh, Madam Speaker, first of all, let me say that there's much about the New Zealand state sector and state services that works very well. Crown entities are an integral part of our system of public services, and for citizens, they're often the public face of government, the agencies that they interact with most often. Collectively, they carry out a very wide range of functions, um, from running public hospitals and schools uh, to performing a broad range of other services and regulatory activities. Given the wide variety and the individual autonomy of the Crown entities, it's important that they remain connected to the core values um, and unifying spirit of service um, that the public service is required to have. There are discrete areas where better alignment with other aspects of the public service can help to maintain confidence uh, and build trust in the Crown entities as public agencies. Uh, without affecting the autonomy of Crown entities' uh, statutory functions, the changes proposed in this bill support greater integrity and accountability in the management of state services. The amendments cover four interrelated dimensions, primarily in the Crown entity sector, uh, with each amendment bringing a part of the state sector into better alignment and consistency uh, with the arrangements that already exist across the public service. So to recap, Part one of the bill addresses the Crown Entities Act 2004, and the changes focus on two key things. They will require boards of statutory Crown Entities to obtain the written consent from the State Services Commissioner uh, to the terms and conditions of a Chief Executive's employment, and they'll introduce a term of up to five years which can be renewed for future Chief Executives of statutory Crown Entities. This basically brings the terms and conditions of uh, Crown Entity Chief Executives into line with the terms and conditions of Chief Executives in the core public service. Part two of the bill addresses uh, the State Sector Act 1988, and again the changes in, in this part of the bill focus on two key areas. They provide explicitly for the State Services Commissioner to set standards of integrity and in conduct applying to, uh, by applying a code of conduct to boards of Crown entities. And the second is that they improve the investigation powers of the State Services Commissioner by modernising them under the provisions of the Inquiries Act 2013 and providing a, new, a more uniform trigger to the exercise of the Commissioner's powers. Uh, the bill was first introduced in February and it has been considered by the Governance Administration Committee and I want to again thank them for their work. I understand that seven submissions were made on the bill, clearly not one of the more controversial uh, pieces of legislation that has been before the House, um, but I do acknowledge the committee has made some helpful recommendations uh, to improve the bill as a result of those submissions. In relation to part one, the most significant amendment that the committee has made, which the government certainly endorses, is an amendment that would insert new criteria the State Services Commissioner would need to have regard to in consenting to Chief Executive terms and conditions. Uh, those criteria include the legal, commercial and operational context of the entity and any information provided by the board, the public nature of the entity and the related public interest and prudent stewardship of public resources, relevant market information, government expectations and other relevant factors. I think this is a, a, a very sensible amendment uh, and it is one that the government endorses. Uh, with regard to part two of the re report, these are the changes relating to the State Sector Act. The committee has recommended six amendments, uh, mainly to provide greater, greater clarity and consistency between the new provisions in the State Sector Act and related legislation. Uh, the first four amendments deal with replacing the State Services Commissioner's powers 
of inquiry and investigations. These powers, I was interested to know when we started discussing this bill uh, at the very beginning, or started the, the, discussing the concept of the bill, uh, are still uh, rooted in the commissioners, in, uh, the Commissions of Inquiry Act from 1908. Um, and in fact, the Parliament has subsequently passed in 2013 the Inquiries Act, which provides a much more uh, modern context for inquiries, a much more, um, I think, streamlined set of uh, inquiry powers and grades of inquiry um, that are much more sensible and fit for purpose in, in, uh, in the modern context. And therefore, bringing the State Services Commissioner's inquiries, into, uh, inquiries powers into line with those new powers in the Inquiries Act of 2013 uh, is very sensible. So the bill is introduced um, could be described as somewhat conservative uh, in the range of provisions from the Inquiries Act that were proposed to be included in the State Sector Act. And I'm told that the Law Society commented that detailed safeguards introduced by the Inquiries Act should also uh, apply, and the bill, as reported back, includes additional provisions from the Inquiries Act uh, relating to the duty of the inquiry to act independently. Um, the impartiality and, uh, impartially and fairly, the ability of an inquiry to designate core participants, and the ability of an inquiry to refer questions of law to the High Court, and these are all uh, very sound amendments that the Government endorses. Another useful amendment ensures that a delegation under the Inquiries Act must be carried out in accordance with the relevant section of the State Sector Act. Uh, consistency between the operation of those acts is clearly desirable. Uh, Madam Speaker, the bill reported back from Select Committee clarifies that inquiries by the Commissioner have the same exemption as inquiries under the Inquiries Act uh, in relation to Privacy Act principles. Uh, this is very important and it is one that has been recently highlighted where uh, an inquiry can only really be effective uh, if people are free and frank with the inquiry and if uh, they're sharing evidence with the inquiry that is of a sensitive nature, which they then know is going to be passed on, it may inhibit the inquiry from being able to get hold of that evidence in the first place. And so there is a real uh, tension here between the Privacy Act and the ability to carry out an inquiry. And that the Inquiries Act strikes the right balance. Um, and the, uh, the intention here is to ensure that that balance is also carried through into the State Services Commissioner's uh, powers. So um, I'm not going to speak in great detail about that, um, but I think that the amendments that have been put forward by the committee around the powers of the Commissioner um, to conduct inquiries are sensible ones and provide further safeguards uh, on the use of that power in line with the powers that would be conferred under the Inquiries Act. So I want to again thank the committee for their work in bringing this bill back to the House uh, in making judicious amendments to the bill uh, and bringing it back, I, I hope, in a position, I, I note that the committee's report was unanimous and I hope uh, that the bill has been reported back in a way that the House can also have unanimous support for it. Thank you. Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, thank you for the